Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. This year's PIAC hearings have started. PIAC uses information gathered through these hearings to recommend projects to the City Council. District hearings will be held on Tuesday, July 21st from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Kansas City Museum. That's at 3218 Gladstone Boulevard. Also Wednesday, July 22nd from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Park Hill Community Education Center, which is at 7703 Northwest Berry Road. Citywide PIAC hearings run August 14th through the 20th. Be sure to check our website at kcmo.gov and search PIAC, P-I-A-C, for more information. To make a request, a PIAC form will also need to be completed. Forms will be available at those hearings online, or you can call the Capital Improvements Program at 816-513-2826. The deadline to submit those requests is August 31st. Kathy Adams, an associate city attorney, and Jim Reddy, who manages the Regulated Industries Division, were recognized for their outstanding work for the city by receiving the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award for June. Mayor Pro Tem. Well, Mayor, this was uh, something I did immediately after we finished the Uber ordinance. Um, knowing that I only played a small role on the back end of uh, getting that ordinance put together, that many others spent hours, days, countless meetings, and um, these two people devoted their personal time to ensure that, that um, the discretion of the ordinance was met. There was a lot of out-of-the-box thinking that um, was done by staff. They understand how their department works, uh, how the legal const constraint needed to be for the city to protect the city, but also knew that this was a new technology that not only did the uh, elected officials uh, want to embrace, but our citizens were already embracing. Uh, the other half of this time frame was the was really the problems I was causing for them uh, related to the discussion we had on liquor cards. Uh, all, if, if you could create a perfect storm uh, for the two of these people, that was it, those two issues all at once. And uh, they, uh, they did work with great aplomb. Uh, they worked and showed the best of what our city employees have to offer. I just want to say it's an honor to receive the uh, Rich No Pay Setter, it's the recognition. Uh, Rich was a great Kansas Cityan. Uh, he was a man I admired immensely. And again, I just want to thank you for recognizing me as a pace setter. No thank you. <laughs> well, I, and I, I tell this to my coworkers all the time. I just think we're living in an awesome time in Kansas City, Missouri. And I, I love it. And um, you all, I've mean, got the chance and the privilege to work with you all for the last four and eight years. And what a great collective group of folks. I mean, you guys have worked so hard to make things happen, and I am so proud to have had an opportunity to work with each and every one of you. And especially, it, 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 it matters a lot to me when you respect those that you work with, then it matters to me what you all think of me and all the nice things that you've all said. I, I, I really appreciate it, so thank you all so much. The Paysetter Award recognizes city employees who are skilled in communications, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. The award is named in honor of former Assistant City Manager Rich Knoll, who served the city for more than 26 years. To learn more about the Paysetter Award, go to kcmo.gov and search Paysetter. For more information, now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Summer is in full swing, so be sure to take advantage of these fun activities at your KC Parks facilities. July is National Parks and Recreation Month, and to celebrate, we're launching a weekly photo contest called hashtag KCPicksandRec15. Take a photo of friends, family, or yourself at any of the suggested weekly locations and post it on KC Park's Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook page with the hashtag KCPicksandRec15. Each photo posted will earn you a chance to win a weekly grand prize. The winner will be announced via social media every Sunday in July, and on each Monday, we will announce five new locations for you to explore. Visit kcparks.org for details. Our official National Parks and Recreation Month celebration, Kansas City's Big Picnic, takes place on Sunday, July 19th 
as Casey Parks partners with the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art to host the biggest picnic the region has ever seen. The Donald J. Hall Sculpture Park and Tice Park will be linked to become a giant space for Kansas City to come together for an evening of fun family activities. Get all the details at caseyparks.org. Save the date for the Ethnic Enrichment Festival, August 21st through 23rd in Swope Park. This 36th annual event features food, culture, music, and more from 60 plus countries. Admission is $3 for adults. Kids 12 and under are free. Visit eeckc.net for details. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Without further ado, I'm as excited as anyone in the room. Uh, I get to introduce our leader in Kansas City, not just in Kansas City, Missouri, because he's the leader here, but I'm gonna tell you, he's a leader not just in Kansas City, Missouri, but the region, and he represents all of us across the country and across the world in an extraordinary way. And his commitment to community is amazing, and I also call him my good friend. Could you all join me in welcoming our mayor, Sly James? Mayor. So too often, you know, when people hear prospect, they start thinking in the negative. But, you know, I have never thought that that was a negative. I grew up one block east of Prospect, so Prospect was my main street. We have $140 million in investments represented around the room today uh, that tell us that something is, in fact, going on that's positive and something, hopefully, that makes the east side better. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's all and everything, because it's not. we got a lot more work to do, and never, anybody who says anything to the contrary is fooling you. we got work to do, and we're going to do it, but you have to start somewhere, and we've started. So I want to look at the projects that we're celebrating today. We've got the Leon Mercer Jordan Police Campus at 22nd and 23rd Street Corridor. The Morning Star, yeah, thank you. We've got the Morning Star Youth and Family Center. And uh, for all of those folks there, we hope that things are turning around there. I know that uh, Councilman Wagner, Councilman Reed, and I worked to try to find some funding for some issues there. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, Ladders of Opportunity Grant that is coming in to help. We've got the Prospect Max that we're going to be working with Joe Reardon on. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Uh, we often hear that there's nothing happening in the urban core, but that's certainly not the case. There's a lot of activity happening on Prospect, and I'm excited to be here to hear more about what those activities are and what developments are coming our way. This is one of the reasons why I'm attending, because I want to hear more and I want to see more. I'm just waiting for us to break the bricks so we can get started. But also, as a community, we have to be a part of this development. So whenever we get started with the development, neighborhood associations are going to have to come in and be able to work with their community, too, to give something back as well. I actually attended this event because I sit over here in the Prospect Corridor at 2420 East Linwood at the shopping center where we're going to have a whole bunch of new developments coming along. Yeah, I believe it's a great opportunity for Kansas City just because we have new police station coming in, new crime lab, new shopping center, uh, actually with the new grocery store coming. I believe it will bring a new opportunity to the city, plus it's the new money district. Well, uh, I'm really optimistic and enthusiastic about Prospect. I love Prospect. Um, I think it uh, has a lot of good business opportunities. And I'm just excited uh, to see the growth and progress, uh, which is why I came to Progress on Prospects. So what we're trying to do and what we're always going to try to do, and I'm not going to stand around and tell you that it's going to be a magical mystery tour and that it's going to be solved in a day. The things that we're trying to fix have been in existence for decades. There hasn't been any change for I don't know how long. But here's the difference. We're making some changes that will be used as catalysts to make more changes. And over a period of time, we're going to change Prospect into something that you love, you're proud of, and you don't have problems with. To view this program again or other Channel 2 video productions, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. 
That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.